up to part two of the Great Lakes in infrared. In part one we saw Toronto and Lake Ontario in amazing contrast. Uh, I'm using an infrared camera, 950 nanometer uh, infrared filter on the front. Just incredible performance. Uh, you can see through the haze in the atmosphere. Now in part two, uh, we're basically flying where I've highlighted the blue segment. We'll be climbing from 10,000 feet up to 33,500 feet. And you're gonna see some serious long distance imagery. Have a look at these amazing video clips. Let's first watch the Toronto again because it's so mesmerizing. Just look at that contrast. Look at the clouds that they rotate. You can tell which ones are in the distance. My camera has 30x zoom. It's a Sony AX53. Incredible camera and it has the balance optical uh, system. So it's great for taking on an airplane because the airplane does shake a little bit and it holds you know, pretty steady at high zoom. Now look at that edge in the distance. You see it? I'll point to it right there. Is that Hudson Bay? Well, we'll find out. Yeah, look at that edge. Something is there. You will see in a little bit. I'll do some analysis. So the GPS app says we've climbed to about 28,000 feet. And we're uh, thereabouts. Look at that clarity, isn't that incredible? Infrared can pierce through the uh, blue haze of the atmosphere. And the contrast is just incredible, look at that. Now I'll be adjusting uh, the uh, color saturation and contrast in uh, Adobe Premiere. That's Lake Huron. looking through the other window and look at that wow we can see the Georgian Bay and Lake Huron it's just incredible contrast wow I'm zooming in I'm zooming in rather look at that Ooh, I can see across the lakes just amazing Oh, look at that. You see that darkness there? I did an analysis here uh, by looking at the distances of 135 and 210, building up a scale and then extrapolating out. And it looks like that cor correlates with the Hudson Bay. Uh, pretty interesting, but we'll see more analysis later. Hudson Bay uh, that black streak kind of ends where that dotted line is right over Griffith Island so it corresponds horizontally with Hudson Bay as well as this map shows we're looking at that tip of Hudson Bay right there pretty fascinating stuff we'll do more analysis later let's have a look at this imagery removing the filter from uh, the front of the camera so I can film my phone inside to see at what altitude we're flying. 
I'm disabling the night shot mode now. That's what you normally see outside. See the the water comes out dark in infrared. Anyway, this is where we're at. That's Google Maps. And uh, it's using uh, the GPS. Receiver that's inside the phone. Just spinning around here, and we'll see at what um, altitude we are in a second. I have another uh, app on here that I use a GPS uh, status app. There it is, GPS status. And I have to hold the phone close to the window so I can pick up the GPS signals. Ah, so we've climbed to about 33,500 feet. 33,500 feet. Yeah, the perspective is so much different, you know. I've been getting used to seeing so far at these shallow angles. Everything looks so much different. Stuff that, you know, you hardly ever see. There's stuff in the distance there. This is just fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I rotated the camera to kind of give you that flying in space feeling. Actually, I was trying to see if the slight curvature we observe is due to perhaps the camera. You will notice in this clips on the right when it moves around the window does distort the, the view because the windows are curved. But I think there's more than window curvature that's at work here. It may be actual curvature. Now we're zooming across Lake Huron. Dun, 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 Look at that. I'm just blown away by this stuff, folks. Wow, look at that. Seeing clearly across the lake. Now that's uh, Duck Island or something. There we go, Great Duck Island. 
and way in the distance that's Hudson Bay over a thousand miles away here's a map showing uh, the direction that we're looking now here is the analysis folks in case you don't believe it because it is hard to believe so I know where Duck Island is or Great Duck Island at about 200 miles and then across over there at 250 miles uh, I take those two uh, distances and just use simple trigonometry and find the angle on a flat plane 1.4 degrees and 1.8 that gives me a difference of 0.4 degrees and then I build a scale going up and then I use trigonometry again uh, based on the angles of 0.2 and 0.6 to now calculate the distance and what do you know that darkness out there corresponds to the distance that Hudson Bay should be at over a thousand miles simply incredible folks just incredible I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say, you know, this is incredible stuff. Yeah, look at that now. Yeah, there's the darkness there. And see, now the darkness kind of went away in that direction because we're looking in a different direction so yeah even horizontally that corresponds sort of with the angles that we should be seeing Hudson Bay at. Now I'm zooming on something else here uh, I want to see if I can see the edge of Lake Superior and I think that's Lake Superior right there it's over 300 miles yeah, this stuff is amazing, folks. Just amazing. Now let's see what else I'm gonna be doing here. There's more. There's more footage that I have. Uh, a lot more footage, and uh, I'm gonna split it up so I don't have videos which are too long and take forever to upload. So, in uh, I'm gonna conclude this part two which has focused on uh, Lake Huron and Hudson Bay in the distance well look at that you can see it and in the next part I'll deal with uh, Lake Michigan because I'm flying into Chicago yeah look at this stuff now here there's some uh, land and plots of land so I'm gonna try to do a similar analysis but look at that airplane initially I thought they were a the same altitude as me but they're kind of flying and crossing my flight path and I'm gonna point the camera up at it and we can see that it's obviously flying a lot higher than we are because I'm seeing it from the bottom so that's another data point earlier in the clips some of you may have noticed the aircraft in the distance that's incredible stuff, folks. Now here's um, some uh, closing uh, comments here. Notice, just notice the horizon seems to have a somewhat drastic change, uh, which is very interesting. Um, I also put lines down, kind of following the property lines. And they seem to converge on the vanishing point on the horizon above the clouds just incredible stuff folks you know if we were living on a globe <laughs> we don't get this kind of long range views you know thousand miles come on you know at this altitude probably see like 250 miles or so you know and uh, not a thousand miles it's just incredible and the horizon also at times seems extremely flat but I don't think it should be totally flat I think it should be somewhat curved not because the ground is curved but because of refraction um, we, we just cannot see 
at a zero elevation angle because there's haze. We're looking down a little bit on the flat earth uh, because of haze. And some people are saying, well, yeah, if you're high up, you're going to see farther. And that's true. However, the higher we are, the bigger the difference between a spherical model of the earth and a flat plane, given uh, haze as the limiting factor for the uh, plane. And uh, yeah, that difference gets larger and larger. So the higher we go, the more conclusive it becomes that uh, the Earth doesn't appear to be a globe. Um, seems to be a flat plane, which is incredible, folks. Just incredible. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, please comment down below. Let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. Uh, this is incredible stuff, folks. Uh, Anyway, stay tuned for more and do subscribe, I have a lot of videos uh, planned.